www.pregame.com. And the boys are back. Ken Thompson, Dave Koken, second of four videos. Another college one, Texas A&M at home finally after a couple of road games back at College Station, taking on a Mississippi team that's sky high and hoping to follow things up. Hugh Freeze, an outstanding coach, going to try and get the guys grounded, get ready, go to, for this big game, Dave, and uh, what a wild weekend in the SEC. Yeah, this, this is going to be a great game, and it's not one I'm going to be involved in. I'm going to be curious to see. Uh, what your take is on it, I think it's a really tough game to analyze. Uh, Mississippi, th this team defensively, is as good as any, but any team in the country. They, they are outstanding on that side of the ball. And you saw what can happen with Mississippi last week when the quarterback doesn't make mistakes. I, I don't know why Alabama didn't pressure him more in the second half, but the fact is they didn't. Wow. He took advantage of it. And, again, Ole Miss makes a couple of big plays on defense late in the game to preserve the victory. Big, big win for them. A&M, meanwhile, they ran into a buzzsaw last week. They, they got killed at Mississippi State. That game was not as close as the final score would indicate. Right. Mississippi State did whatever they wanted to do from the outset in that game. But it was an ideal scheduling spot for the Bulldogs. They came in off a bye week. A&M was off another crazy game the week before where they'd come back, rallied late, and then gotten the win in, uh, in overtime against Arkansas. So scheduling dynamics heavily favored Mississippi State. Right. The scheduling dynamics favored Texas A&M in this game. I don't know whether the hill's been solved or not, so I'm going to be really interesting to see, uh, interested to see how he reacts to the bad game last week. That was his first taste of adversity as quarterback for this team, and how Mississippi bounces back from what is a potential letdown win over Alabama. I think it's a fascinating game, and boy, is this huge as far as playoff ramifications go. If Ole Miss can go in and win this game, and this is why I'm worried about them not flattening out, they go in and win this game. I think they become one of the favorites to get to that 14 playoff. Yeah, I'm not so much that they're going to be flat. It's the environment. I mean, it's all well and good when you're playing in Oxford. You go down to College oh, Station, you're up difference. against it yep. there. Yep. And, uh, and again, we'll see how good Wallace is. And you're, you know, I'm watching this game prior, uh, the Alabama-Mississippi game prior to going inside the Coliseum. And I said the same thing in fourth quarter. I'm like, are you kidding me? Arkansas, you're, I mean, Alabama, you're not bringing any pressure up well, the middle at all. I'll give, you got to say this. Maybe they were trying to, and Ole Miss just said, they did. no, we're well, not going to have it. They only rushed four yeah. against five and six, and, and, and uh, Mississippi kept the running back in there as extra protection, and when you give Wallace time, he's like a, another it, good quarterback. It, he'll, he'll burn. Yeah, it, it's almost as if Saban dared Ole Miss to throw the ball, and maybe he was thinking, look, this is a big game spot. This kid is, well, let's face it, he's made big-time interceptions mm -hmm. in the worst moments at times for Ole Miss. Maybe Saban's gamble was that I think he'll make a mistake, and he didn't. No, he didn't make a mistake because he was not pressured up the middle, and he did he did a nice job. He played the best quarter, that oh. fourth quarter of his career there at Ole Miss, and they deserved the game, and you know what? It was great for the people there at Ole Miss. They deserved it. What a big day for the Magnolia State. And again, follow it right up because Mississippi State back oh. home against Auburn and Mississippi going on the road to Texas. For at least day. one weekend, the state of Mississippi was the college football capital of the universe. Yeah, I'll tell you what. You've got two, that game, Mississippi State at home against Auburn, and then you've got Arkansas hosting Alabama. Alabama better get it together because Arkansas is coming off the bye. And an interesting stat that I read somewhere yesterday, uh, you would think Nick Saban automatic bounce back off a win. Uh, going back, uh, I believe it's their last nine straight-up losses. Next game, 0-8-1 against the spread. Yep. They don't bounce back, which is interesting. Not that I'm, I'm not getting involved in that game myself because I have a feeling that Arkansas is going to try and do what Alabama defends best. The run. And, you know, let's face it, Brent Bielema, he thinks throwing the ball is illegal at times. So uh, it might be a good matchup for Alabama, and I left the game alone. But, uh, in fact, I think I might have left the entire SEC alone this week. It looks like a tough league, but you have not left it alone. You've got uh, a good gonna, opinion on this game. Well, I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead. I'm going to make it official. Texas A&M at home against Ole Miss in the line right now. Texas A&M minus two at home. And I'm going to take a shot. I know Kenny Hill and the guys, again, last year, remember, Clemson, Georgia, out of the gate. We all assumed, let's go by the magazines and everything and assume that the winner of this game is going to be dynamic. They're going to be great. Texas A&M goes into Columbia, blows out South Carolina. Let's go ahead and put it. A&M, they're up on that pedestal. South Carolina, where are they now? Sitting at 3-3. Three and three. a and coming off that loss where they got lambasted, like Dave said, wasn't as close as the final score, 48-31, but it was really 48-17 before they got a couple, oh, by the way, touchdowns. But I am going to give Kenny Hill and the 12th man there in College Station the lean here. Line went up to 3.5 briefly. 
Now it's down to two. So Ole Miss, Hugh Freeze getting a lot of respect here going on the road. Their first true road game in a difficult environment. They did go to Vanderbilt. Big deal. Vandy so down this year and they got him in week two that it wasn't much of a contest. 41 to three. They did play Boise, Boise State. The opener at the Georgia Dome on a neutral field and they won that game with a big fourth quarter. This game, I think that Kenny Hill and the guys will get off to a good start, and I think they have enough offense. Speedy Noyle back there as far as that receiving core, that's huge. They have five weapons on that offensive uh, front there as far as catching the ball. Uh, Williams and Carson pretty good out of the backfield as well, but it's a defense that's going to have to show up. They're going to have to slow down Bo Wallace. I think they will. I think they're going to pressure Wallace up the middle, something that Alabama did not do, and if they do that, I think they're going to be able to outscore Ole Miss. I don't think they're going to stop Ole Miss, but I think they're going to be able to outscore them at home, I think that environment down there is something that Mississippi has yet to see this year, and we'll see if Wallace and Hefe and Freeze can solve that. Again, like Dave said, they can take a major leap towards possibly being in that playoff themselves and, uh, of course, having those two wins back-to-back -back over Alabama and Texas A&M. Those would be two big feathers in the cap. For uh, Mississippi, again, Walton and Mather still not sold on the running game, which means they're going to rely on Treadwell, Core, and Sanders as far as their receiving game. They came up big. If Wallace can duplicate what he did last week at home, if he can do it on the road, hey, Ole Miss will have my vote. But my money already is on Texas A&M. I laid three. I took a little bit more, minus two. I'm not sold that uh, Mississippi is going to be a juggernaut on the road. And again, this is their real test as far as the first road test. Again, the Vandy game to me didn't mean anything, Dave. So I'm going to take a shot and uh, think that someone will have the guys ready and, and sky high. I know the 12th man will be there. If Ole Miss is ready to take that next step to the elite as far as the SEC, we could see them in that fourth. Oh, yeah. Playoff. Yeah, it's no slam dunk for sure. Um, I think on talent, Mississippi might be a little bit better overall than AM, but there's no question you make some great points, and I think the spot does favor the Aggies. There you go. Defensively, we know Mississippi is definitely a better team. Again, Kenny Hill will have to get the confidence, they'll have to get out of the gate like he did against Mississippi State, but then the defense is going to have to slow them down a little bit. We saw them get that first touchdown. Didn't matter. Dak Prescott and the boys had all the answers down there in Starkville. So there it is. I'm going to say go ahead, take a shot on AM, lay the two points, less than a field goal at home, 12th man. We'll see if a and is going to be a player in the SEC West the rest of the season. We'll come back with a couple NFL playoffs, or NFL games, I should say, no, not playoffs, but uh, Dave's got to play on Miami Green Bay, and I've got to play on Cleveland and Pittsburgh. We'll talk about those two games when we come back. Ken Thompson, Dave Koken, right here at pregame.tv.